Holton come from the backside and foul them. Lobby's two shot fouls. First foul on Holton, and to the line goes Clyde Bradshaw, the man who, along with another East Orange, New Jersey product, Gary Garland, and named a, a facility in that city, the Bradshaw Garland Basketball Court. Quite a name. One of the big assets of Bradshaw is that whatever press you put on him, he can break. He breaks all pressures by himself. One out of two, and Foster rebounds, clears to Holton. Three-point UCLA lead at 36-33, just underway in the second half here at Arizona State University. And if you will see, following this one, your second half of the doubleheader, Arizona State, Ohio State, a turnover as Foster fired too tall for Holton. That's the kind of mistake that plagued UCLA during the course of this year. Primarily early in the season when Larry Brown used so many freshmen, but uh, now and then they'll get into a rut as they did in the second half against Old Dominion, but still won on Friday night. Well, the first half they only had six turnovers, which is good. Mitchum and Holton, the guard, with another rebound to Foster. The Bruins on the run. Foster with a bank and he scores. Five point UCLA lead. Boy, is he quick. Can you imagine trying to run with him back in your day? to see him and Isaiah Thomas go against each other. It's Aguirre against Wilkes, and Mark Aguirre scores, and it was right in the face of James Wilkes. I think at halftime, Coach Meyer said, hey, let's get it into Mark Aguirre. Bradshaw overplaying, and Foster couldn't get himself free. Now he is. And away from 17, not there. Dillard rebounds for DePaul. Bradshaw brings it down. Oh, he clever. <laughs> At 3.30, then he dribbles behind his back, gets his balance. Aguirre between the legs to set up a 15-footer. He hits two in a row. And it's 38-37. UCLA by one. Mrs. Oh. Ray Meyer applauding the Blue Demons. Mary Margaret Donnelly. Sanders had an opening, didn't take it up the alley. He'll shoot it from outside. Way off the mark. So Mitchum with a rebound. DePaul has a chance to take the lead. I keep saying the wrong way. It's Margaret Mary, Dick. <laughs> Bradshaw. Great pass to Diller. What a play. Good timeout coming up now. Larry Brown. Stop their momentum. Six unanswered points by DePaul. A brilliant feed from Clyde Bradshaw to Dillard for two. UCLA's lead once at five has melted. DePaul moves in front. 39-38. We have 17 minutes remaining in the game. This is Bob Hope at Texaco's Refinery in Anacortes, Washington, where we're busy 24 hours a day refining crude oil into gasoline, aviation fuel, heating oil, and heavy industrial fuel. And to help us do the job, Texaco has increased its manufacturing capability and modernized its refineries here and around the country. It's the kind of investment we're making to bring you the fuels you need. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. We'd like you to meet some of the family, the Browns and Eckerts, who each have four Pintos, the Schluters and Knievels, who each have nine, and the Bowers, who have ten. We'd like to think Pinto's great mileage had something to do with this. After all, Americans have always had a nose for value. That's just 36 of over 2.5 million Ford Pintos sold in the past 10 years, more than any other small car in America. Smile, everyone. Why don't you join the family? See all the action, drama, color, and excitement of the 1980 National Collegiate Basketball Championship game. This is it. 14,468 fans here at the University Activity Center. Other scores underway. Syracuse jumps to a big 15-point lead against Villanova. Final, Georgetown advances with a tough win against Iona. It was LSU moving on with a 10-point victory over Alcorn State. Halftime, Texas A&M, the champions of the Southwest, leading North Carolina 30-29. Kentucky, 39, Florida State, 25. The Wildcats clawing at the Seminoles. Final, Indiana, with a victory against Virginia Tech. They'll play Purdue in their next round. Well, they want to scout each other. They both have won this year. UCLA trails to Paul by a point. 39-38 pressure by DePaul, and there's the turnover. Bradshaw made the play. Oh, what quick hands by Bradshaw. He stole the ball twice in there that time. And a whistle away from the ball. The foul is on Wilkes of UCLA. 
Muslin Mark Aguirre on the weak side of the court. Well, watch this. Bradshaw steals the ball there. UCLA gets it again. Now watch it come up, kick the ball <laughs> off of the Holton. Now they pick the ball up down court. So quick. Now the ball with a run of six straight points to move into the lead. They have a chance to build a lead now. Their biggest of the game is four. UCLA has had a five-point lead twice. UCLA has gone back to a two-three zone. Bradshaw here and that too. 41-38 to Paul in front. Eight straight for the Blue Demons. Good well, teams have runs, don't they, Coach? Yes. And they have stars, too, and get the ball to the star. That's all she wrote. That's what they've done the second half. Maybe Ray Meyer was listening to you, as he used to when you played the ball at Marquette. You could hear each other through the walls of the locker room. Yelling at each other. <laughs> we yelling at our ball players. I used to yell for five minutes, and he yelled for five minutes. You could hear what each one was saying. Do you know he got $1,800 his first um, year at the ball? Sanders can't connect. Good rebound by Sanders. He stayed in there, and it's 41-40, and that was a big hoop for the Bruins. That was his salary for the whole year, Dick. How much was it again? 1800 1800 Well, it's 38 years ago. Bradshaw working on Holton. It's probably worth 80000 today. <laughs> I would hope so. Gets him to Dillard. Alternating the defense. The back to man-to-man, -to -man, UCLA. Cummings in the corner. McGuire moves outside. Now he does a little traffic control. Close up against Wilkes. Look at that action away from the ball. Cummings. He'll take the 15-footer and hit it. 43-40. Terry Cummings now has 11. He's their key rebounder. Played four and a half minutes, second half. The ball 43, UCLA 40. Foster, Wilkes. McGuire does a good job defensively, too. A lot of set play here. Should feed Ern, uh, Kiki underneath. Foster hanging and scoring. He actually changed his air. And midair moved it from right to left and made the 15-footer. 43-42 Foster. A dozen for UCLA. Five minutes gone. Second half. See, they got to analyze the defense each time down. That's why they got to keep the ball in Bradshaw's hands. Aguirre can't hit. And it's Sanders with a rebound. He does a good job at 6-6. Looking for help. And now he'll take it up himself. Chance to regain the lead for the Bruins on this trip down court. Bradshaw hawking Holton. It's Dillard on Foster. Wilkes has Aguirre. Vandaway and Mitchum. Wilkes to the iron and scores. He's made some good moves underneath. And UCLA is back in front. 44-43. Wilkes with six. He's no threat from outside, but when he drives towards the hoop, he's dynamite. UCLA, after relinquishing the lead that they owned at five, now is back in front. Mitchum, short. It's tapped out in a break. Oh, a fast hand oh. by Vandaway. Off to Foster. He scores. Any breakaway with Foster has the ball, it's two points. Ray's a little disgusted on that play. So eight in a row for DePaul. Then UCLA comes back with six straight points. And it's the Bruins on top by three. 13.45 left, a whistle. Yeah. And the foul on Wilkes trying to stop Aguirre inside. He pumped him. He, yeah, picks, he, he picks up one more foul, Dick. They move back in Allen. They're trying to rotate the fouls on his ever cover Mark Aguirre. That's the third foul on James Wilkes. And Teddy Grubbs comes into the DePaul lineup. He replaces Mitchum. Dillard, good outside shooter. Not there. Sanders, another rebound. He has been a big key to UCLA's lead. Two on two. Holton to Vandaway. Stolen by Dillard. Good hustle by Dillard. He sets up Bradshaw. Foster almost with a steal. Oh, what a pass. <laughs> He's in the back of his head. Aguirre. And a foul coming, pushed underneath that time. Obvious foul. Terry Cummings gets the foul. Larry Brown, at first, I think, thought it was against UCLA. We're going to catch that last steal right here now. Ball's thrown over to Kiki Vandaway, but over goes Kip Dillard, puts on his whirl away gear, picks it up, kicks the ball up to the man who should have it in his hands, Clyde Bradshaw. Boy, he really came a long way. He was behind the ball when it was passed and caught up with it and batted it away. UCLA by three. Seven minutes into the second half. 
Lob tossed to Vandaway, knocked away. Oh, they say Vandaway touched it last. It appeared Aguirre knocked it out of bounds. I would say you're right that time, Dick. It'll be DePaul going the other way. Got a a nice game here. Three point spread. Cummings goes to Grubbs. Aguirre with Wilkes. He's got three fouls. Aguirre can't hit it. Sanders tips it to Holton. Three on one for UCLA. Now three on two. Wilkes, he's fouled by Aguirre, and that'll be the third on the star of the Blue Demons. Third foul on Aguirre. Beautiful play by Wilkes that time. He could have got out of the way of Aguirre, Aguirre if he wanted to, but he went for the foul and the possible three-point play. He didn't get the shot off, so he gets two shots. Here comes the pass in. Now watch. He could have got out of his way because Aguirre committed himself already. Wow. He was upstairs then, too, wasn't Indeed. he? Indeed. He dipped his head, too, so he would hit the backboard. Halftime score, Coach. Syracuse, 40. Villanova, 28. Kentucky leads Florida State, 43-27. Sizable lead for the Cats. Wilkes hits the free throw. UCLA's lead is four at 47-43. And James Wilkes now seeking his eighth point of the game. That Kentucky game is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The home of Western Kentucky. John Cricky and Billy Packer calling that one for the NBC audience. Stolen and a foul on Dillard. Dillard stole the ball, but apparently got a piece of the wrist. Halftime now. Kentucky leads Florida State 49 to 27. So apparently Kentucky will advance. We're starting to fill in the blanks as we boil down this 42nd National Collegiate Basketball Championship. The winner of this game will play in the next round. The winner of the game that follows Arizona State or Ohio State. Ray looks worried. There's a guy with 16 grandchildren. 66 years of age. He's going to coach till he's 81. He's a two-time Notre Dame captain. A lot of people hope he will coach that one. He said if his son, if his son Joey leaves, he leaves. Sanders has a pressure now by DePaul. Foster free in the corner, passes up the shot. So UCLA slowing it down a bit at this juncture. Spreading down a little bit. They got a four-point lead. 12-20 left in the game. Very close to their first drive. If you get a seven-point lead, change the style Wilkes. of the game. Out of bounds. A lot of bumping in there. Wilkes thought that uh, he was treated unkindly, but it goes to DePaul. He lost control of the ball that time. Well, we know some of the matchups coming up. It'll be Georgetown against Maryland in the East, and Iowa will play the winner of that Villanova Sy Syracuse game. Cummings with a lob pass and an easy two. 47 45 with 12 minutes left. That Maryland Georgetown game, that's a subway game. Georgetown beat Maryland earlier this year. Buck Williams was out of the Maryland lineup at the time. Almost a steal by Dillard. Holton free, rarely shoots. And it's rebounded by Aguirre to Paul going for the tying hoop. What a difference in UCLA in three months. They're running their offense and defense is excellent. I'd like to compliment Barry Brown for that. Teddy Grubbs loves that shot. Not there, but Bradshaw is. Tipped by Aguirre. Who wants it? Who's got it? Sanders rips it out of the pack, and finally we get a jump ball. The ball got in back of Mark Aguirre. He couldn't get a hold of it. Sanders ended up grabbing it, and he... We're getting too rough in there, pushing and shoving, so they call it a jump ball. Coach, another matchup you're going to like in the Midwest. LSU is going to play Missouri. The Tigers, a Cinderella team with a couple of upsets. It'll be Kentucky and Duke, a rematch of the finals a couple of years ago. That'll be another matchup next week. Purdue and Indiana each beat each other during the season. And Clemson against Lamar. The Lamar what? Lamar, oh, I don't want to say it. <laughs> the Lamar Lone Rangers. Cardinals. <laughs> Band away. UCLA leads 49-45, 11 minutes left in the game. Vandaway now with a total of 11. That's his first points of the second half. Cummings, 16-footer, right there. Oh, a lot of confidence for a freshman. A big pressure game like this, and he pops it up from 15 feet, holds it out. Cummings has 15. He leads DePaul. Last time that you say they lost, the Grubbs beat them, so they're like the Twins. When Grubbs signed with the Paul, two days later, Cummings said he was going to go with the Blue Demons. Wilkes trying to get inside. It's against Grubbs of DePaul. I think uh, James Wilkes is playing an outstanding game. Second foul on Grubbs. 
team fouls. UCLA three. DePaul has four. I like the fact these officials are letting the teams play. They've not interfered with the game. They've just helped control it. Intercepted by Bradshaw. Vandaway to beat. And Vandaway stops him. Grubbs oh. misses a dunk. Big miss by Grubbs following it up. Foster the other way. He'll give a plus to Kiki Vandaway there. He saved two points. And the UCLA fans cheering the effort by Vandaway, the veteran, working with basically a freshman sophomore team. Inside to Sanders. He's the sophomore, and he hits two. 51-47. The Bruins refused to wilt, and we're under the 10-minute mark in this game. The kids call uh, Sanders Seattle Slough. In your expression, he's a thoroughbred for them. There's the secretariat, McGuire. <laughs> Here's the whole stable. Taken away, and a long pass to Holt, and Bradshaw to beat. He's oh. up. And UCLA has its biggest lead. Timeout. Nine and a half minutes left. And Holton has punctuated the Bruin advantage 53 47. Winners do when they rent a car, they save. Everybody loves the winner. Only the winner can really make things happen. Hertz economy fares make number one a bargain. Subcompacts are as low as $14.95 a day weekends and $98 a week. Free mileage, too. Everybody loves the winner. Everybody. Field narrows to four as top teams go head to head for a ticket to Indianapolis and a shot at the national championship. The NCAA regional finals next Saturday and Sunday. Here's that play again, Coach McGuire. As here comes the turnover, Sanders steals by right, Mike Holton. Here he goes upstairs now. He's a great athlete. Doesn't look to shoot, but he drives the basket good. Clyde Bradshaw goes up with him, but wow, those are two great athletes. Look at that. Holton, 6'3", from Pasadena, California. And that please misses Larry Brown, Barbara Brown. Boy, she's right into that UCLA mood. Doesn't take long, does it? Want to say hello to J.D. Morgan, the athletic director retiring at UCLA, a close friend for many years. Certainly helped us so many times in my career. And rooting as hard as anyone for his beloved Bruins. You know, he was a great asset to Coach Wooden through those years and those great championship teams. Batted away, last touch by Sanders. Boy, Sanders wanted that when he thought he had it. J.D. Morgan will be leaving. Another friend of mine, Fred Miller, who is no longer the athletic director here at Arizona State. want to send along my best regards to him, too. Worked on my graduate degree with Fred back in Indiana. Dillard pumps. Not there, and suddenly DePaul having trouble finding the hoop, and they get another break out of bounds as DePaul got a big play from McGuire in his hustle. He forced it to touch a Bruin before it went out of bounds. Well, you have a body like McGuire, the later the wall the game goes on, the later the game, the stronger they get. Well, they've missed two times down court this time. Let's see if three is the charm for DePaul. They trail by six. And oh, what a prior, as you'd call that one. From the bottom of the rim. So UCLA was sitting in the 2-3 zone that time. Cummings has 17 points to lead the ball. Eight minutes and 42 seconds left. UCLA's lead is four. Oh, and a turnover. Good defense. And Dillard was holding the beat. And he scores. Oh. That's a couple of balls that found home for DePaul. The last two have trickled in. Sometimes you wonder if Destiny's starting to make a move here. UCLA's lead at six, now down to two. 
Foster working on Bradshaw. Oh, clutch shot by Foster, a 15-footer. He has 16. Boy, he's putting on a one-man show. You clear out of sight and let him have the ball, and that's all she wrote. It's going to be tough to keep off our home freshman Don't team. even talk about that team anymore. Aguirre. Cooley drops in a 17-footer. It's 55-53. Less than eight minutes left. Aguirre has 15. Now you've got to find out who's going to crack. Usually around this time of the game, some team cracks. The team moves up eight points and can play the clock. Cliff threw it. The freshman Cummings hawking him. And it goes off his foot. Cummings jabbed the ball away. It hit the foot. A throw it out of bounds. Surprisingly, at the present time, UCLA has three freshmen on the court. With Sanders a sophomore and Vandaway the only senior. Well, Wilkes just came back in for Pruitt. And a ball with a chance to tie. Seven and a half minutes left. Cummings has scored eight of DePaul's last ten. There he is with the ball. It's Aguirre. Hello. <laughs> Doctor, it was a great operation, but you cut off the wrong leg. 55-55. <laughs> UCLA had a six-point lead, and it's disappeared in a hurry under the charge of the DePaul Blue Demons, and we have a new game with seven minutes left. I just like the way UCLA is controlling themselves. They're, they're well coached. They, they do their stuff right down to the end. Here. Sanders, no foul, and Wilkes takes it back for UCLA. Boy, it appeared to be a slap in there. It's been away. UCLA leads 57-55. Nice. Fake a fake to his right, went to his left, automatic layup. Van away with 13. As I said from the top of the show, he doesn't look pretty, but he always gets the job done. He's just the steady. 640 left. It's Cummings. He ties it up for the ball. 57 aside. Cummings with 19. What's going on here? <laughs> just go back and forth, and every shot's a pressure shot. UCLA is called a timeout. For the fans, DePaul and UCLA alike applaud the action they've been watching the last five minutes. As back and forth we go. Here is that last shot. Has Vandaway found some room? No, that's a block on Cummings. He kicks the ball up. And, and then, then steals. Wilch re-steals. It comes back down court. And Vandaway fakes to the right. Watch here. Fakes to the right. Then he automatically goes in. Give him a head fake. Left his shoes on the court. What an advantage to use that opposite hand. A tie game at 57. Did, did you know BF Goodrich TA radios are the best selling line of high performance radios? <laughs> That's so? Did you know Goodrich TA radios have won races all over the world? <laughs> That's so? Hey, the Goodrich blimp. Huh? <laughs> so Goodrich has no blimp. Is that so? For dependable TA radios, come to BF Goodrich, number one in high.